If you live in the US and you have a family and you're in the market for a family vehicle, your go-to choice is always the minivan or sometimes an SUV. However, here in Asia, we don't really have much choice when it comes to minivans. Rather, we have a different vehicle segment called the MPV or the multi-purpose vehicle. Now, if you're a family man and you have MPVs all around and you want something a little bit more sporty or a little bit leaning towards the SUV side, but you want it to be as affordable as possible, then you go for something like this. This is the 2020 Honda BRV. This is an MPV or rather a subcompact SUV that can seat seven and has some sporty aspirations. Today, I'm going to go around the car. I'm going to show you its features and fun facts. Then I'll take her out for a drive to see how this family hauler feels on the road. Let's do this. Now, before I begin this video, I'd like to extend a special shout out and thank you to Honda Green Hills. I am shooting this video on location at their dealership. And if you are in the vicinity of San Juan or in the neighboring cities, and you're in the market for a Honda, please pay Honda Green Hills a visit and check them out. Now let's get on to the video. The BRV stands for Bold Runabout Vehicle and shouldn't be confused with the CRV, which is available globally. This BRV is sold mostly in Asian countries and in Mexico, where families would need an affordable yet stylish family hauler. The BRV I have here is the 1.5V variant, which is the range topping variant here in the Philippines. It's got all the bells and whistles and the features that any family man could ever want for his family car. Starting off with the most obvious thing about the BRV, its size. If you will look at it, it is a tiny family hauler. And when you say that it can carry seven passengers, you'd wonder how can you fit seven people in something like this? And that's where Honda's ingenuity comes in. Because I was also wondering when I was seeing these cars on the parking lot, how you could fit seven. And we will find out later exactly how it's done. But looking at its styling, despite its small size, it carries that aggressive modern look of any subcompact SUV in the market. It shares the same front fascia as its bigger brother, the CRV. It's got all that chrome treatment for the front grille, and you've got that aggressive jutting out front bumper. And for the top variant, the range topping variant we have here, you have this silver painted front skid plate that differentiates you from the other BRV models. Looking at the headlights of the BRV V variant, you've got a projector type housing for your headlights, but since it's an affordable SUV, it is not LED yet. The bulb is not LED, it's not HID as well. Rather, it's still your standard halogen headlamps. You've got your daylight running lights also on your headlights. And moving down here, you will see you have your fog lights, which is also halogen bulb, which is varnished with chrome. Now, beside that chrome varnish, you have some fake vents right here. It gives a little bit of a macho vibe to the BRV, but since it's a fake vent, I'll give it a pass. And as I mentioned, the front of the range topping V variant gets a silver front skid plate that gives it that SUV feel and look to it. Moving to the side of the BRV, you will note that you also have for the range topping V variant, you've got your chrome garnish at the bottom on top of this plastic cladding that we have, which is pretty much standard for most subcompact SUVs on the market. This is supposed to protect your car and your paint from the usual mud, dirt, sand, rocks, and whatever, if ever you take your BRV out for some off-roading. Now, if you take a look closer at the side, you will notice that it has a lot of design lines and design features that Honda integrated into the BRV so that it gives it a sleeker look despite its diminutive size. So it's Honda's way of making the car look bigger than it actually is. Moving on to the wheels, the BRV V variant sports 16 inch wheels in two tone diamond cut design. Now, the design is pretty standard with, for most modern 
cars nowadays and these wheels are wrapped in 19560 Bridgestone tires these are economy tires Ecopias which would should help you with your fuel efficiency fuel economy and if you will look at the wheel and tire setup it's a 16 inch which is pretty small for an SUV nowadays but given the fact that the BRV is a small SUV it's a dinky car in fact it would goes well with it and complements the vehicle perfectly moving on to the engine Honda has a tagline for its BRV V variant they call it the most powerful in its class now what kind of engine power and figure should this motor produce in order to deserve such a tagline the most powerful in its class well the BRV V variant comes with a 1.5 liter IVTEC engine that is good for 118 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque now that is pretty good numbers for a small size SUV slash MPV like the BRV that's a lot of V's but if you are looking to haul a family of seven and if you're going to take it out to the mountain roads of Baguio or nearby mountain areas even with 118 horsepower it may have a little bit of a challenge doing the job but for regular city driving or if you're just not fully loaded all the time then 118 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque those are pretty decent numbers for a city MPV slash SUV. Another notable fact about this engine is its impressive fuel economy. This BRV recently participated in a fuel economy run and it returned 22 kilometers per liter in highway driving. Now that, those are pretty impressive figures for a mini SUV like this. Granted, they did the run in the middle of the night when there's no traffic but they did it with an AC on is set to level 1 and with a regular constant speed of 60 to 80 kilometers per hour so 22 kilometers per liter these are decent in fact these are impressive numbers for a subcompact SUV such as the BRV moving to the back of the BRV the range topping V variant comes with a rear skid plate to differentiate it from its lower variant uh, brothers and it also has this chrome garnish right there now this is also equipped with a rear view camera which is standard for, for the brv v variant and it also comes with reversing guidelines now if you open the trunk you will now see how you can fit seven people inside the brv you got your three rows and the third row can accommodate two people now even with the third row up you've got a decent amount of trunk space in fact you could fit up to 223 liters of stuff inside the brv's trunk even with the third row up now that's a decent amount of space because you could even fit a couple of hand carry luggages right here on your way to the airport now if you want some more space you could tumble down the third row and to do that you just have to hit the latch here at the side Right, which folds down the seat backs and hit, give a tug to this uh, piece of cord here and that now expands your trunk space to a usable 470 liters of trunk space in case you don't just bring a hand carry luggage in case you need to haul large suitcases those can now fit inside the BRV but then of course your seating capacity drops down to five now since the brv is marketed as a family hauler it's time for us to check out the comfort and space at the back especially the second row and the third row just to see how your family members will feel about you while they're riding the brv so let's go inside the car okay let's do the second row first first impression is wow for such a dinky suv such a small form factor the interior is surprisingly spacious oh my goodness check this out you got ample knee room right here and you've got ample headroom as well I'm five foot six and I don't feel claustrophobic at all closing the door you have this orchestra type seating arrangement wherein the second row is higher than the first row which gives you a good view of the windshield up front 
You also have your aircon vents right here and this would help keep you cool, at least the second row and the third row passengers. It's got its own control system. Uh, you got uh, fan controls here for one, two, three. And it's nice to see that Honda didn't scrimp on its driver and passenger seat back pockets. We've got a couple of those as well. So sitting at the back of the BRV, it is quite comfortable. You can also slide your seat forward and back to give more legroom to the passengers at the back. Now it's time to go into the third row, the dreaded third row of any mini SUVs. So we already have the second row seat back folded here. We're gonna go inside. All right. So I'm now seated at the third row of the BRV V. And surprisingly, I'm five foot six and there is enough leg room at the back. You see the second row is adjusted as if there's somebody sitting there. So it's a full house, it's a packed vehicle. But I have my knees almost hitting the seat back. But that's because the leg room for the front is not adjusted uh, for someone who's five six, adjusted for somebody who's taller. So even if you have to accommodate somebody who's like a six footer up on the second row, a five foot six person would still fit in the third row of the BRV. Although it is not the most comfortable of spaces. I wouldn't want to stay here on a long drive because <laughs> I might get some leg cramps pretty soon. But if the second row passenger is somebody who is still five foot six, just like me, on this side, you will see that I have some leg room here. There you go. The seat in front of me is adjusted for somebody who's five foot six. So this is actually a, a bit better, a little bit more comfortable. Although I'm still seated as if the, uh, I'm still seated with my knees a little bit up. So it's still not as comfortable. So the third row is best reserved for people who are below five foot six or for tiny humans, also known as kids. Now let's proceed to the driver's seat to see the business side of the BRV. Upon opening the door, you will be greeted by leather seats with a red accent right here. And I must say, this is tastefully done. You've got your red stitching right here, that nice red strip right there, a little bit per perforated as well. The leather is also of decent quality and the seats are a little bit on the thin side. So let's see how it supports my body. Let's go inside. Once you're inside the BRV, you are greeted by a standard Honda steering wheel, of course, with the logo. And you've got some buttons here that will help control your infotainment system. Speaking of infotainment system, you've got your Kenwood 2DIN system right here, which comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. And you've got an automatic climate control system right here. Moving down to the bottom, you've got a power outlet. 12 volt power outlet light right here for charging duties, a couple of cup holders in front of the gear shift, and the gear shifter is a CVT, which is pretty much the same across all the range of Honda in the Philippines. It's got a CVT transmission. You don't have a manual transmission option here. Now we also have your standard handbrake as well. In terms of quality of materials, You've got a brushed uh, insert right here. It's more like a brushed dark aluminum. You've got some hard plastics on the dashboard, which is pretty standard for an affordable SUV such as this. You've got some hard plastics here as well, but you've got a red accent for leather, red accent right here at the arm rest. Now, as you go inside, the first thing you'll notice also is you don't really have a key fob here. And if you try to turn the car on with this button you will just turn on your hazard lights because that is not the push start button so at first I was looking for where the engine start button was and then I found it here at the other side at the left hand side of the driver which is pretty typical for European offerings so I'm going to start the car now once the engine is running You've got your standard gauges right here. You got your speedometer front and center. You got your uh, tachometer right there. 
and it redlines at 6,800 RPM. Quite a high revving engine for a 1.5 liter IV tech. And you've got your other information here to the right side, which shows you everything you need to know, including your fuel. The seats of the BRV, although they're wrapped in leather, are typical Honda seats. And when I say typical Honda seats, I've experienced this ever since from way back in the 90s when I, I was driving my first car, my Honda Civic. And the seats are very firm. They're supportive, yet they're firm. As in, they're really firm. Firmer than the other brand offerings out there. But I must say again that despite the diminutive exterior qualities and the size of the BRV, the interior speaks a totally different language because inside it's quite spacious. They were able to maximize everything, all the space inside the BRV. And as you can see, it can fit seven people in a pinch. Uh, but I think it would be more comfortable if you just bring with you five people plus yourself. So that makes it six passengers. That would be more on the comfort side. But if you really, really need to do so, you can turn this into a seven-seater with three people sitting side by side at the second row. So now that I've shown you everything about the BRV V variant, inside, outside, and everything in between, it's now time to take her out for a drive to see how it feels in city driving. Let's do this. Okay, first stop, visibility. Since this is an MPV, you've got a nice big windshield in front of you and visibility is perfect. I would even say it's 10 out of 10. Uh, this BRV has wide, large windows, a large windshield, and it's quite easy to, to drive. Driving now here on EDSA with not so perfect roads, you could feel the bumps. The, the suspension is a little bit on the stiff side. It uh, reminds you that it's a subcompact SUV and not a minivan. Now let's check out the acceleration. This is an open road. Let's, okay. We have 118 horsepower on tap, but it's made it to a CVT. Now in terms of response, it's typical for a CVT. <laughs> It doesn't respond that much. In terms of low-end response, it's decent for city driving, but if you try to step on the gas, there is a noticeable lag in your response. Okay, try it again. Yeah, you hear the engine whining, but you don't really feel and see the acceleration happening. So I guess that's something that you would expect from a family hauler. It doesn't have to be an in-your-face type of acceleration, which is okay. So let's move on to other more relevant stuff about the BRV. Let's take, for example, comfort. As I mentioned, the air conditioning is cold, it's decent. And you've got a good sitting position. The seat is high up. And despite being a small SUV, it still gives you a commanding view of the road. Yeah, I had to adjust my camera a little bit there. You've got speed sensing door locks, which is a good plus. Your windows are one touch down, and let's see if it's one touch up. Yes, it is one touch up. Let's see if it's the same for all sides. Nope, it's only the driver's side. Let's see the passenger. Nope. So you've got one touch up and down for the driver side window only. The top range BRV V variant also comes with, believe it or not, paddle shifters. You've got paddle shifters hiding right here, you can see there, behind the steering wheel. And in order to access your paddles, you have to shift from drive to sport. I would believe the S here in the gear shift stands for sport. Let's try that now. All right, so I shifted to first gear with the paddles. And even if I'm playing with the paddles, the response is still the same. That's the drawback of CVTs. The engine is whining but the car is not accelerating as expected. 
Around the city, the small size of the BRV makes it a perfect city vehicle. It's not too wide and it helps you navigate narrow Manila roads quite well. It's not so long that you'll have a hard time parking this car. In fact, I believe it gives you a no-frills value proposition of a seven-seater. It's quite obvious that the BRV prioritizes fuel efficiency and fuel economy over outright speed. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially for a family man who just wants to save on gas and help the environment at the same time. The steering wheel is electric power assisted and typical of most economy offerings, the steering wheel is, well, it's a little bit over boosted. You've got a bit of heft, a bit of feeling, but it, I don't know, it feels a little bit artificial. It doesn't feel natural like a mechanical power steering rack and pinion assembly. Ergonomics wise, everything is pretty much within your reach. Handbrake, uh, gear shifter, everything is pretty much well placed. Except, I always mistake the hazard button for the engine push start button because it's also circular and it looks like a push start button but the engine start button can be found to the left side of the car so keep that in mind if you're getting a BRV do not try to start your car by pushing the hazard lights on <laughs> that would be funny so there you have it that is the Honda BRV top of the line V variant it's a great seven-seater for somebody who's just out of college and looking for a car that can haul his friends. Or for the family man who's looking for an affordable yet stylish family vehicle that's not so large and easy to maneuver in the city. Now, how much is the V variant going to cost you? This particular model goes for 1,155,000 pesos, which you could buy right here at Honda Green Hills. Once again, thank you guys for watching my videos. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I put out car reviews every week and there's really a lot more to come. I would really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, hit that like button. Comment below as well what you think about the Honda BRV. I'll see you again in the next video, guys. I'm Reagan. Bye-bye.